In the previous video, we have looked at registers and how they can be used to save values. On a clock edge, the value at D is moved across to Q. However, what if we don't want this to happen every single clock cycle? What if we want to selectively save a value and not to copy it from D to Q every positive clock edge? Often, registers will have what's called a write-enable input for precisely this reason. Only when the write-enable signal is high and there is a positive clock edge do we copy the value over. This can be thought of as an AND gate connected to the clock input. This is fairly easy to implement in Verilog, but it does change one rule that we discussed earlier, or at least we need to consider it. So let's code this up in Verilog and have a look at that. So we'll start by making a basic register. We will use an always underscore ff procedural block to perform a blocking assignment of data out from data in. As this is a register assignment, we shouldn't forget the reset, so we know what the starting state is. Next, we can implement the write enable. Basically, we write an if statement in our always ff block so that we only perform this blocking assignment when wrn, the write enable signal, is high. This might appear to break a rule that I specified before, where I said that in these procedural blocks, you always need to define an output for all possible input paths. However, that rule only really applies to combinatorial logic, not sequential logic, because every input path is defined well in sequential logic if we don't do this. Remember, sequential logic is logic that can hold state. It can save a value. So this means that if we don't define an assignment for every single input, then it's OK. The register re just retains its previous value. Let's think about this a bit more in this example. So if we have a positive clock edge here and WRN is not high, but it's low, then we don't have anything saying how we should define data out. However, because it's a register, data out is retaining the previous value. So the output is well defined. We could for completeness at the top of the procedural block or complete the else statement, we could say that data out has a blocking assignment of data out. However, this isn't really required. Okay, let's simulate this and run it. Yep, we can see that the output is only changed when the WRN signal is high. Great, that's what we wanted. OK, this was a short but important lesson. The basic takeaway is that with an always underscore FF procedural block, our signals can save their state. So we can conditionally update them. They don't need to be defined for every single input sequence. Great, thanks. See you next time.